This is the Market Your Business Like a Pro podcast. Episode 63. Welcome to this episode of the Market Your Business Like a Pro podcast. I'm Ken Countess, and today I've got Jill Brennan with me. Uh, Jill is out of Brisbane, Australia. She's the founder of Harbrand Marketing. Uh, Jill is a marketing consultant. She's a, a mentor. And as I mentioned, founder of Harbor and Marketing, she's been in the small business trenches, I love that, for about 20 years, and has worked in and worked with and worked for uh, small companies. She's author of a book on marketing for small business. It's called Get Smarter Marketing. So um, we're going to talk today about storytelling in business. Jill, welcome to the Market Your Business Like a Pro podcast. Hi, Ken. Great to be with you. Yeah, it's great to be with you too. And and uh, as I mentioned, Jill's in Australia. We're dealing with about a 15-hour difference in time here. Uh, we're recording this, by the way, for those of you who listen uh, every week. We're recording this just after Thanksgiving in the U.S. So we're at the no end of November 2018. So if you're listening more or less live, uh, happy Thanksgiving. And uh, if you're listening at some future date, I hope you had a great holiday season. So, uh, Jill, why don't you tell uh, our audience a little bit about you? Sure. So, um, as you mentioned, I've, I've been working uh, in small business for quite a long time. Um, I've been doing marketing consulting for smaller businesses probably for the last 10 years or so and have found that, you know, a lot of businesses, business owners are really confused about marketing and what to do and, and they're often looking for help. Uh, so, you know, I often will provide strategic marketing assistance, um, you know, helping them with their planning, training for their staff and, you know, helping them better communicate with their audience. Fantastic. So uh, you mentioned you've been doing this for about the last 10 years before uh, getting into marketing consulting. Uh, what was your last gig, as we call it, and why did you leave it? Sure. So I uh, originally, I started my own business. So that was when I was working in a small business, uh, uh, probably about 15 years ago. And I found that um, it was a bit, it was an innovative service. It was an online service and um, not a lot of people were, you know, as used to membership sort of services then as they are now, now, mm -hmm. like we've got all sorts of memberships. Uh, so I did that for a few years and um, just found that you know, while people thought it was a great idea, not enough people were prepared to pay. So I moved from that into affiliate marketing. And I really did that to, to work out what does it take to make people, you know, pay or to, to sign up for something. So mm -hmm. I did that for a number of years. And, you know, affiliate marketing is great, um, but it's, it can be very knife edge as well. You know, you're buy, you know, I was buying traffic. And then hoping that I was going to generate leads and sales on the on the back end to actually pay for the advertising, and you know I, I did it for a few years, but it can be a bit exhausting. So I was quite keen to move into something yeah. else. That that's one of those things where you know it sounds cool. It sounds like wow, this will be an easy way to make some money. I'll just be an affiliate for somebody else. And and as I'm sure you know, as you found out yourself, it's. Uh, a lot better to put the effort into marketing your own business and building your own business than somebody else's business. You know, I, That's I, right. I yeah. agree with that, right? And, and I think the other thing was that I mean, there's different ways to be an affiliate, of course, you know, and I was doing very much the traffic volume kind of way. So I wasn't really getting involved with the products I was promoting. So I think um, that doesn't help as well. Whereas if you're actually invested in something and then you're doing reviews and you, you sort of focus on a couple of key products. There's not as much churn and burn uh, mm -hmm. as there is if you're, if you're not really invested and you're not building a list, you're just, um, you're just promoting offers. Uh, but sure. it's great to, you know, great learning experience. I certainly uh, gained a lot uh, in that way. Oh, yeah, to totally a great learning experience. We have partnerships with a, company, a couple of very well-known companies, and, and so we treat them you know, as, as they should be, as where you're truly partnered and uh, mm -hmm. helping other companies build their business. Well, let's jump into today's topic, which is storytelling. Um, I have up on my other screen um, uh, your blog, How to Share Your Business Story in a Way That Works for You. 
And I really like what you had to say about that. So if you don't mind, why don't we start out with that? And, uh, you know, let's, let's uh, give people a sense of what this whole thing about storytelling is all about and why it might benefit a company to do some storytelling about themselves. Sure. Well, I actually think of storytelling as being like a superpower for small business because you can be a lot more personal uh, in how you communicate than any sort of, you know, big corporates. They, they can do storytelling, but it's not as immediate. It's not as emotional. They're, they're not going to get that same level of connection. So I think, you know, that's one of the advantages of being a small business. You can, you can tell your own story, but you can also use storytelling in your social media posts, in how you, um, how you talk to your audience in terms of your emails. Like you can, you can make it a lot more personable and mm -hmm. it's a great way to build an emotional connection with your audience because you know, you can say, well, I did this and, and this is what happened. Whereas if you're a big business, you know, you, you can't do that. They can't speak with that one voice. So great way to build an emotional connection. It's also a really great way to, to sort of put yourself in your customer's shoes. I mean, you can talk about an experience that you had that your customers might be experiencing. So you can uh, uh, make it a lot more personable there. Um, and of course, the About Us page is often the second most visited page on a website uh, after the home page. So people want to know who you are. They want to know what you're about. So finding a way to tell your story in, you know, in a way that sort of resonates is, is really good. And it's not expensive. <laughs> All right, so Jill, let's talk about uh, one, one of your website blog entries was how to share your business story in a way that works for you. Uh, would you mind diving in and uh, you know, let's tell everybody uh, what you had in mind and, and let's talk about how a company can build a story that works for them. Sure, well, storytelling um, in small business can be really, really um, important, but it can also be really effective. So one of the uh, second most visited pages on most websites is the About Us page because people want to know who they're dealing with. Mm -hmm. So rather than landing on that page and finding that, you know, it's just some sort of rote, um, you know, example of, you know, I started here and I did this and it, it can be very boring <laughs> for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't, it doesn't have the punch that it really could. And stories can be fantastic to, to build that emotional connection to actually you know, um, feel as if you're sitting across from a small business and learning from them and, and really connecting with them. Yeah, I, I, I think I like to think of it in terms of authenticity, that, that you're not the same as a small business, you're not the same as a big box store where you walk in and, you know, it's this, you know, big warehouse basically full of stuff. Uh, and they don't know you any better than anybody else that walked in. Whereas a small business, uh, it's a much more personal, interactive relationship. That's right. I actually think of storytelling as being like a superpower for small business because you can be a lot more personal. You know, it's not, you can tell your story. You can, you can say, I did this or, you know, we tried that. Whereas when you're a big corporate, they, they can't do that to the same level. There is no one uh, unifying sort of brand voice, if you like. So I, I really think it's a, it's a great thing that small business have in their favor, it's just being able to use it in a way that actually works for them. Sure, it's, I think it's a fantastic marketing tool. So what makes a good story, Jill? Sure, so I really think that there's four key elements. The first uh, is to talk about you know, what the problem is. So if you're talking about your story, your origin story for your business, so why did you start the business? Yeah. You know, what was the, the thing that you thought, you know, this is not right or, or this could be better? You know, that's, that's the hook to start with. The next is what challenges you faced. I mean, every story, you know, the hero faces challenges. They can't sort of get what they want. Um, if you think of, a, you know, a company like Dyson, which, of course, is a bigger company, but they, you know, he famously had 5,127 prototypes of his vacuum cleaner before he found a successful or before he was able to put together the successful machine. So, you know, those challenges really give the, give your story um, emotion and they really, you know, show you that you didn't just go, oh, this is a problem and, and I turned on a so solution and here we are, you know, it actually shows the struggle. Mm -hmm. uh, and the next one would be the triumph. So what was that solution that you came up with and why was it so great? How did it overcome those problems? And 
um, you know, what, what were you able to put together? And then the fourth one is evolution. So what's next? You know, what, where are you hoping to take your business or your story? Um, your, yeah, just what, what are you, what are you hoping to, uh, to, go, to move to next? And that could just be, you know, we keep up to date by going to conferences or we regularly read magazines or, you know, whatever it is. But I think it's really important to, to leave some hope and to leave some sort of, oh, I wonder, what will, I wonder how that will work. I wonder what will happen next. I love the way you framed it as the struggle, the triumph and the evolution. Uh, that's beautiful. Absolutely great. So, so uh, when we talk about those three elements of a story and you talk about the purpose, uh, I know also you say on the blog, uh, you talk about relevance and emotion. Yes. Yep. So um, you, you want to be putting emotion in there, obviously, because that's, that's what people connect with. So sometimes that can just be the language that you use. So you know, just as I was describing then, you know, we could talk about challenges or we could talk about struggles. And there's a lot more emotion if you talk about struggles. Um, so sometimes it's just word choice. Sometimes it's, it's phrases. Um, you know, I, one of the ones I use when I talk about uh, what I do is that, um, you know, I've had a front row seat to a lot of small business struggles, the things that plague them. So trying to use emotion that actually creates an image um, that, that really, you know, gives that better sense of actually what you're talking about and try to move away from sort of any corporate speak if you can. Um, and that might be, you know, the royal we, <laughs> where, where if it's just you in the business, you know, I do this rather than we do that, you know, things like that. Um, and relevancy, you know, that's really um, putting yourself in the shoes of your customer. So you could talk about, and I, I could sit here and talk about lots of different things, but if it's not relevant to, to who I'm talking to, to, to you and to your audience, then it's, it's not very interesting and people get distracted and often they'll just click away. So you obviously you want to make whatever you do it, it to be relevant to whatever you're promoting, whatever your business is actually about. Great. So let, let me ask about the type of clients you like to work with. Is there a sweet spot? Is there a certain kind of a client that uh, you find you really connect with? Sure. When I'm doing one-on-one uh, -on -one consulting, then it's businesses that, you know, that think differently, that actually want to build the solid foundations for growth. Um, I'm doing more now in the training space. So really, uh, I find that people that have maybe tried lots of different things before, um, you know, they might have done some uh, online advertising, some email marketing, a few different things, but they're actually not finding that it's working. You know, they're, mm. they're trying all these different tactics, but what they're actually missing is some strategy behind it. So, um, you know, I've developed some training products to, to help with that, but, but really that's it. They're, they're motivated, they're ambitious, but their marketing is just not working for them. Yeah, I think consistency is, is certainly a key as well. Uh, so many times we come across individuals, small businesses, even large businesses, where they try a bunch of different things and say, well, that didn't work, I'll do this. This didn't work, I'll do this. But yeah. they only try it one time. And yes. uh, you know, just as you have to build a brand, you've got to build your marketing campaign and have some strategy behind it, as you mentioned, and some mm -hmm. consistency. And not just you know, try something one time and say, well, that didn't work, I'll go on and do something else. You've got to really put your mind to it and, and make sure it makes sense. So. You know, working with someone like you, I think, can help a business really gain focus and uh, develop the kind of strategy that will help them be successful. Yeah, I think um, people perhaps who, who, you know, don't know a lot about marketing, which is, you know, a lot of business owners often think that you, you do it and it's done. But marketing, you know, as you know, it's all about testing and trying different. Mm -hmm. I mean, you do want to try different things, but then try with a purpose and reporting in place so you can actually measure what you've done and see where the, the problems are and then take some steps to, to fix it. Yeah, and so often too, marketing really is about cultivating and developing a relationship. It's not just yes. that one-off thing. Uh, you know, certainly mm -hmm. as marketers or working for companies that are looking for marketing help, you wanna help them generate leads. And uh, sometimes generating the lead itself is the easy piece. It's cultivating that lead uh, developing it into a real contact. I know when we think about 
CRM systems, customer relationship management systems, the very first thing is they call that, that new prospect a lead and they don't become a, really a contact until you've cultivated that uh, to some degree. And so right. I think that's the danger a lot of uh, businesses run into is they're out there generating a lot of leads, which is great, but then what? Right, and mm, that's where exactly. some professional like you uh, comes in to help them uh, really make some, you know, create some value around that relationship so they want to do business with you. That's right. So I often think of those sort of activities as you're raising awareness stage, but then, mm -hmm. as you say, you have to think, well, what are you raising awareness of? <laughs> What's the next stage? And I see it quite a lot, you know, on Instagram, for example, I see people promoting they're paying for advertising and they're promoting particular products and then you click through to the website and you can't find the product right you just, what, what, why are you wasting your money this is crazy and yeah. they said you know doing re, retargeting but yeah just uh, that follow through it makes all the difference totally so Jill this has really been a great conversation uh, storytelling in business such an important element of marketing your business how can people best reach you Jill this is time for your shameless promo or plug sure well often when you're thinking about storytelling for your business it can be really hard to get started so I've prepared a, um, a worksheet where you go through the four parts of the story storytelling and you can answer those and, and it makes it a lot easier than just staring at a blank page. So that's at harborin.com forward slash story. Excellent. Jill Brennan, it's been a pleasure having you on the Market Your Business Like a Pro podcast. I look forward to the next time we chat. Thanks so much, Ken. It's been lovely chatting with you. Bye. That's it for this week's episode. Hey, if you enjoyed this episode and you're a regular listener, even if you're not a regular listener, uh, go ahead and uh, visit us on our Podbean website. That is where we store all of these uh, podcasts. It's marketyourbusiness.podbean, that's P-O-D-B-E-A-N dot com. And uh, follow us there. Uh, let us know that uh, you really enjoy the podcast uh, by following us. And this way you'll get alerted every time there's a new episode. Thanks for being a listener. We really do appreciate it. And don't forget to tell your friends, too, about the Market Your Business Like a Pro podcast. You can find it everywhere. Check out all of our episodes of the Market Your Business Like a Pro podcast. It's on our website, marketyourbusiness.co. Look for the podcast tab, and there you'll find all previous episodes. And while you're on our website, don't forget to check out all the other resources and sign up for our weekly newsletter, too. Thanks for listening to the Market Your Business Like a Pro podcast with Ken Countess. Be sure to visit marketyourbusiness.co to access show notes, discover our fantastic content, and sign up for our mailing list. Have questions? Send Ken an email, ken at thecountessgroup.com or Twitter at Countess Group. See you next time. If you need help with this or anything else related to marketing your business, reach out to us.